Five after three. <coughs> uh, Councilwoman Taylor, would you do the honor give some blessings? I would be glad to. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be gathered here today to do the business of the Cherokee Nation. We pray that you will guide our hearts and guide our words, that we will do what would be pleasing to you. Pray that you will be with our servicemen and women, both here and abroad. Keep them safe as they protect us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Once again, all the newly elected, I'll need to know if you want to become a member. David Walking Stick. Brian Warner. Gil England. Keith Austin. Harley Bezard. Here. Joe Bird. Honey. Here. Sean Crittenden. Honey. Mike Dobbins. Here, yes. Frankie Hargis. Wanda Hatfield. Oh, honey. Rex Jordan. Here. Dick Leg. Honey. Mike Shambaugh. Here, yes. Mary Baker Shaw. Honey, yes. E.O. Smith. Here, yes. Janice Taylor. Here, and yes. Victoria Vesquez. Honey, yes. We do have a quorum. Uh, thank you, Shelly. I'd like to hear a motion or entertain a motion to approve the July 10th, 2017 minutes. So moved. So Second. Moved. Second. Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. Uh, down to reports. We got Miss Stillwell Strawberry Princess, <laughs> Diane Kelly. Come on up. <laughs> Give us some goodness. <laughs> it's embarrassing. You always wear red with the Stillwell color. We like that. Well, Represent like, Adair County. I like red. Uh, I just wanted to say welcome new council members, Mary and EO and Mike and Mike. Welcome. Look forward to working with you and look forward to sharing information about career services and all the stuff that we're doing. Um, Talking Leaves Job Corps. Mr. Don Lucas retired. He was uh, a long-term employee over Talking Leaves. Prior to that, he had been the principal and superintendent at Holbrook Schools for many years. And Don so graciously said that he would come back and work for us on a contract. So he's actually our superintendent over all three of our job corps centers here in the state of Oklahoma. Oh, okay. So uh, he's still going to be employed with us, but on a contractual basis so that he can serve in that capacity since all three of the centers work as Oklahoma Job Corps Academy for our high school diploma certifications through the state. How many of the Talking Leash Job Corps are tribally contracted? How many what? How many of the talk? How many of the job corps across the United States? How many of them are tribally um, uh, contracted? Or two, two. Wow. We're, so we're one, one of two. two. The other one is Kicking Horse Montana. You say Kicking Horse? Oh, Kicking Horse Montana. Really? Right. Wow. That's, that's interesting. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, the our NAVTEP program. Uh, I asked Jan Brogan to be here. I think most of y'all know Jan. Stand up, Jan. Jan worked for us at Northeastern State for many years, and then she came back and worked for us in the higher education department. And then she transferred down to my department, and she works with uh, Connie and uh, Laura uh, in the uh, nursing program. She oversees the nursing training program, and uh, Ben Buckskin is going to go to work for the Healthy Nations Department in about another week. So with that said, we needed to put somebody over the NAVTEP program, which is our business technology and our surge tech with Connie's program and the childcare certification. So uh, she's already been working with surge tech, so we just moved all of the other two programs over there. So Jan's going to be the uh, person over that uh, starting next week. Huh and she's gonna be working under George Roach in the vocational training program. So I just wanted to share that with you. And that's good information. Is she still over the nursing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. In fact, uh, she and Laura, Laura, Laura Lundberg, they are the two that uh, do the interviews for those students who actually do the payback through the uh, tribe so that whenever they finish their nursing degree, then they come back and work for us in one of our health facilities. And that's been a real successful program. And she also works with the search tech. Uh, she's going to be moving when we move out of the tarot building. We're going to move up to what uh, Bruce says is the Kwanzaa hut. I don't know what that is, but it's where housing rehab was on the other side of the casino. Yeah. 
we're moving uh, Taro, uh, Job Corps Recruitment, Outreach, and Placement, and then Jan will also be up there, her and her staff person. So that's where they'll be located. So I just wanted to share that with you because I know that I know that health is an area that uh, Connie and I have discussed about looking at long-term planning for the next three years for some of the jobs that are going to come open. So we wanted to make sure that we had uh, people in place that were already working in that capacity. So I want to share that with you. Um, Job Corps Outreach and Placement, uh, right now they're moving forward and trying to get the center full. Uh, we've got a lot in our inventory right now, and our Job Corps is still uh, number one in the state, and we're also one of the top ones in the nation. Uh, Jay and Ramona Holt are doing a really good job. Uh, I know that they still have problems with some of our students, and we do still have the zero tolerance that we have over at the center, and that's something that uh, the Department of Labor is really looking closely at nationwide and they have actually turned some centers over and they have actually shut the doors on some centers. So uh, we know that our performance standard is up there and if the performance standard is not up there then they're looking at turning some of those centers over. So I'm sharing that with you because I know there's a lot of uh, publicity that's going out there nationwide about Job Corps. Uh, my department's been real busy working with the chief's office and the speaker's office on the tribal council orientation, which is scheduled this week. Uh, we hope that you will take part and uh, have an enjoyable and educational week, and uh, you'll get an opportunity to visit with the cabinet, executive directors, and all their programs in the next few days. And as always, some of the programs you uh, have uh, an interest in, you'll get an opportunity to meet with some of their key staff. Uh, they plan on bringing some of the key staff and introducing them to you <coughs> over the course of the orientation, which starts at 1 o'clock tomorrow, and it'll go through the rest of the day and then all day Thursday. We also have a tour planned for you on Friday. Uh, you'll be going north to see some of the new facilities that have been built, and we also will have a picture book on the other counties that will show you some of the uh, renovations and some of the things that we've done over the course of the last several years. We can't get you in every one of the 14 counties, but we're going to show you some of the newest facilities that we have. And I appreciate some of you council members that have so graciously said that you would be part of that tour and help uh, roll out the red carpet when the group comes through in uh, the facilities at uh, the casino. Uh, we've got lunch planned for you at the Grove Casino, which is one of our newest casinos. Uh, you're going to get to see one of our newest clinics in Jay. You'll get to see one of our other new clinics in Vanita. And then we also have uh, you down at the Industrial Park in uh, Mays County. Then your last leg will be uh, dinner at the Hard Rock in Tulsa. And then we're going to bring you back to Tahlequah. Uh, we're not taking you to see the buffalo. Uh, Bruce is going to probably have a fish fry. He usually does that in October. And it's usually at Bull Hall, so you'll get to see the buffalo then. And I'm sure Mike can... Harley's seen those buffalo lots of times <laughs> since it's in their area. Uh, but uh, we've got lunch planned for you, and uh, as always, all of our directors are going to roll out the red carpet tomorrow, and they'll have a lot of stuff for you, a lot of good information. Uh, we've got a booklet that we've prepared that will give you general information so that when you uh, have the uh, budget hearings, you'll already have firsthand information about all the departments and what goes on. Any questions? Questions? Uh, what time is dinner scheduled? What time is dinner scheduled? Well, <laughs> we hope around 5.30 or 6, but a lot of it is going to depend on how long-winded some of these people are on our trip. And, we're, and I usually try to, I'm up there helping the driver, so I keep pushing him to keep us on, on line with the time. So uh, it'll be an all day. We're going to start at 8.30 Friday morning, and I'll get you back here, I hope, by 7. That's a Friday evening, so, you know. But you're going to see a lot of good stuff. It's going to be very educational. And if this is your first time on the council, I would encourage you to go because you don't realize some of these people are really excited about seeing you come out. And they don't get to see all of these council members. And they don't get to see very many of you all. And uh, the only time they see you is if you're campaigning. And so if you can come to their facility uh, and, they, and entertain you with some refreshments, <laughs> or a stopover, they're very happy to, they'll, they'll meet and greet you there. It'll be a warm welcome everywhere you go. Uh, I just wanted to ask Diane if you'd hang out a minute so I can ask you something after. Be glad to. Thank you. 
I just wanted to uh, express appreciation for your staff. I had a gentleman call me and he had a myriad of things going on and your staff was kind enough to go personally sit down with them, go through all of it. And we've, we've got a lot of his issues taken care of and so I appreciate that. They've been real good to keep me updated on what's going on with him. So please pass that on to I them. will. I have good staff. They've been here yes, a long time. Mm -hmm. Any requests from Mr. Diane? Fantastic. Keep up the good work. Thank you. All right, we'll see. Uh, next, down to Executive Director Report, Mr. Ron Etheridge. Good afternoon. Good Always on. tough to follow Diane. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 1979, I'm on the 20-yard line, headed out playing Grove Ridge Runners, uh, 80 yards from a touchdown, tied 14-14, and uh, let my staff talk me into throwing the ball deep. We throw the ball deep, and uh, they pick it off. It looked like a New York Life commercial. Kid goes back the distance. We end the ball game losing, last play of the game. Even my dad was in the stand saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, hindsight's 20-20. Wish I had that play over. Wish I had to play over on the Promise Scholarship. <laughs> i just tell you right now. Um, I uh, understand that some of you uh, received phone calls and heard about it before you actually got, got a letter. That's my fault. And I apologize to you. And uh, I can assure you I learned from it just like I learned from that deep pass to end the ball game. Uh, ultimately, it's my call. And that was my call as well. So, uh, like I said, we're going we're gonna to learn from it. Uh, I would like to say thank you uh, to uh, Janice for the job that she did uh, because basically, I mean, she got that thing together and uh, through working with Chief uh, and uh, the executive <laughs> branch, the legislative branch, you worked at it. I mean, we hopefully have a solution. Uh, now, the solution basically is, is a, a one-year solution. And so I'm open to answer any questions that you might have for me, provided there that I can answer. If I can't, I've got the Attorney General back here that can help me. Hey, Ron. Yes. Uh, we're, uh, it's, it's on our new business. If you would, just go and give your report. And then we'll, if we have questions on this a new uh, business item, we'll, we'll bring it back up and we'll, we'll question you on the, on the whole Okay, just have two or three things. I uh, want to introduce Dr. Charles Gord, who's a new director at the Heritage Center. Dr. Gord, can you up, please? Most of you know him. Uh, under education. We have other education people back here that uh, will speak here in a second, and I'll let, uh, I'll let uh, them uh, introduce. Uh, and, uh, but uh, I don't want to uh, spoil their their thing, and uh, I have an uh, uh, announcement or two. One, that uh, Roy Boney um, has been selected uh, to the American 40 under 40, Native American 40, 40 under 40, and he'll be uh, receiving that award September 6th uh, in the state of Washington. Um, so anyway, uh, you see him, uh, you might, uh, Congratulate him. For those of you that are new council members, uh, he's in charge of our language under education. And so uh, he's a uh, congratulation to him. And then would like to tell you all that uh, we've had 5185 applicants uh, on the scholarship. Um, we uh, still have some missing documents, and about 524 of them. And keep that in mind, the numbers there, because each one of those counselors are required to do about a fourth of that is what it amounts to. We are uh, awarding notices uh, daily and then we are payment schools weekly uh, until we complete them. So that's what's going on in that. Uh, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a uh, tough situation with the, uh, with the promise scholarship thing, uh, but, but uh, we're getting there. And uh, it's, we're, we're, we're taking care of business. I will tell you this, it's so much better. You know, you, you, you have one area that, that you may drop just a little bit and another area pick it up. But, but 
on, under those scholarships, it's been so much better. We've had very few phone calls uh, of people saying, hey, we were late. We're training them, and, and we're, I feel like our, our, our staff's training them properly. Okay, and you all have the rest of our report, so if that's it. Uh, you guys have any questions for Mr. Vaughn Etheridge? Yes, Councilman Taylor. Um, under the outreach and presentations, we've had two tribes come and visit us for a software demo. Are we using new software, or is this something unique that they have seen our success with, or can you speak to that, or do I need to? Right, right. Do you need and we are, uh, and it's something that we adopted uh, in um, in the spring, and uh, uh, we had. Um, uh, it, it is some different software, and it, it's, it's worked well. Jennifer would be probably the, the most appropriate one to speak on that because, you know, she's working directly with the, but it, uh, it has worked well. Uh, it really has. I mean, all of our, our counselors have, have said that they, I mean, are able to move through the process so much quicker and everything. But it's just, it just, it just takes time to do them. I it mean, does. there's no, no way around it. But it, it has, it, it's, it's worked good. I wish I could answer you okay. better. Um, I'll just email Jennifer my okay. questions on that because I'm just curious about that. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, Councilman Shaw. Yes. Uh, Mr. Etheridge, on behalf of all the people who did call me about that Promise uh, program, I, I feel I have to ask this question. I personally balance my checkbook once a week, and last month there was no mention of a shortage. At what point were you aware that it existed? Uh, it was... Uh, you go ahead. We're, Councilman Shaw. Let's get through the reports first, and then down in new business, we can we can hash off, get get more questions and answers and all that good stuff. Let's just hold on to that that question, okay? Thank you. Yes, Councilman Crittenden. Mr. Estridge, I want to thank you for being accessible to me over this past week. And uh, you called me back, and we had a few conversations, uh, <coughs> cleared some things up for me when my students were wondering about about uh, what we were going through. You had no problem answering the phone, looking their name up and helping me out. So uh, I appreciate the work that you do. Um, I got, I've got one question. I want to clear this up um, and ask you. I'm not real clear on the concurrent uh, students that some of them fell through the cracks. Mm -hmm. um, a few months ago, it came before the council um, about moving it from nine hours to six. And uh, I appreciated Mr. Lay. He, he kind of led the effort and uh, that said, no, we want to keep it at night. And then uh, I thought it was over with. Then the next thing that I heard, and I'm not pointing the finger at you, I'm just trying to get, trying to get it clear here. Next thing I heard is there were, you know, those students that fell through I had them calling, hey, Sean, uh, they're telling me that, that they're not going to pay for the nine. So what happened What happened to our council uh, saying, no, we want it to stay at nine? And it sounded like it remained at six. Can, can someone clear me up on that? Uh, Ron? No, well, um, I, I was under uh, the impression that you guys opted to make it nine and there was legislation to make it nine okay and and that which that's what happened and it, it is nine hours but it's it's a uh, hundred dollars an hour uh, is what it is now this does not include fees uh, so uh, the fact that you know I mean the colleges are going to charge you you know fees and then it does not include books as well it just includes the hour so yeah, they can take nine hours, and and we will pay nine hundred dollars. Now seniors, uh, they can use that money because the state pays for seniors for for six hours. So that money can be used for those seniors. That that hundred dollars per hour can be used for fees and for for books. Okay. So I can I can hey. tell my constituents, hey. It's, it's nine. Yeah, it's $100 nine, but it's a hundred dollars an hour. They need to understand that, especially juniors, where they're not getting any state funding or anything like that, because they need to know. They need to check into how how much the fees are with the in the respective institutions that they're enrolled at. 
you know, they, that's what I would do. I mean, if they want it all paid for, then they, they may have an issue there. Now, I will tell you, we have concurrent numbers. We have 424 uh, enrolled right now. So. Uh, and Councilman Moore? Yeah. I think that what, I think what Sean's alluding to is some of the things. I think this was last spring that we're kind of looking at. You know, I mean, I know that I look, had uh, our people at Carl Albert pull all the letters that they got. And I know in the fall we paid up to nine hours. In the spring we paid up to six. All of our business offices got those letters. I had some students that say they didn't get that, but then I had others that brought it in. You know what I mean? And they sent that to our business office. And I think too that, you know, not, you know, and I know that's what, I think that's what you're talking about, am I right? Not this start of this one. I think when we did our legislation, we were starting it for this fall and the next spring where we're paying a hundred dollars and I'll tell you not to you know beat up the state you know I mean it's like beating a dead horse right now in education but let me tell you the funding formula and what concurrent it's a great thing all right because I, I'm, I'm for it but what it's doing to the institutions and what they're having to do to combat it the state pays them back they waive that tuition and they refund the institution 26% of that. So basically the college is saying, we're paying the rest of it. I mean, we're footing the bill. <coughs> Our concurrent numbers are through the roof and we're looking at it as a cabinet from where I'm sitting at going, what are we gonna do? Because if you kill it, you can't kill it because the state's not gonna let you. You know what I mean? But it's kind of like, what are we doing? And it's for our sake at my institution, get kids getting 30, hours by the time they graduate they're bypassing us and moving on and that was our niche to get them there those first two years or those first two semesters then they decided to stay you know not that that's a problem of anybody else but i just want to bring that to the forefront of what we can do on the state level because we have a voice we are cherokee nation and we can go up there and the and until they you know we're we're taking a beating because of you know some of the different things that have happened but until they step up and decide to you know hey what are we going to do with concur are we going to keep adding this to juniors are we going to do this to seniors are we forcing our kids to grow up too soon i mean that's some of the things that i'm hearing you know just no matter how you look at it but the institutions when you get refunded back 26 percent you know at ou they got a good football program osu's got another you know they've got other ways to fund but i can tell you at my institution at carl albert <laughs> We had to cut the basketball program, which has hurt us bad, you know what I mean? So we're we're taking a lick on the chin, you know what I mean? And you've got uh, Red Lake Community College lost a million dollars on current, you know what I mean? So they're not, so it's a bigger, it's a, it's a large issue. I think that $100, that's a great thing, but then like what <coughs> Ron Etheridge just told us, you look at what the institutions have to do. It's like when GRDA raises the rates, what's the city of Dallas all do? They have to pass that down to the consumer. So the students, at the end of it, there's new fees, there's new things because we want to keep the doors open. I mean, it's almost like they're forcing the doors closed on education. I don't, I'm not one to figure out who to blame. Let's just find a solution and what can we do. So, thank you. Uh, Councilman Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and from what I'm hearing from my two, two uh, at least two of my educators here, kind of makes me stop and think about what we did a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. And and it was my understanding, and I may have misunderstood that we we're going to leave it at nine and leave the payment at the same. Apparently, we did the hundred dollars. That was part of the legislation brought up. And, and so it looks like we split 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 the, the legislation. And I'm wondering if this time should we not reconsider, it's too late for this semester, reconsider for the uh, spring semester uh, another avenue, another plan. You know, we need another game plan, it sounds like. And I don't know how to get there without a work group from, from another educator who, who's sitting at the chair and, and speaker with former educators. Uh, perhaps there could be a work group to work with education 
to try to, when we tried to save the nine hours, did we do something uh, in yeah. reverse? Right. And so, to me, when I heard some of these kids are taking nine hours, it amazed me we had kids smart enough to take nine hours mm -hmm. while they're going to high school. So that was a good thing, but I guess I'm asking Mr. Chair for, for some help to form a work group uh, to, to get with education, to try to figure out how to get us back to where we, apparently we're not where we need to be. That's what I'm hearing. And so we need to get back to where we need to be. Yep. And we need to try to figure that out. And that's just a, a suggestion to yep. I think it's a, it's a worthy su suggestion. I, uh, so get a work group formed uh, to discuss concurrent enrollment. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, and, and Councilman yes. Thank you. And, you know, I'm a proponent of taking a look at let's, let's think about being sustainable as we go into the future. That way we don't have to have to take a look at this. And, if, you know, I mean, you're looking at these. I've seen that they were at 2012, you were at 2,000 undergrads, and now we're up to 5,000. Well, what's that number need to be? Then, you know, or to, I'm not saying I don't want to cap education, but, I mean, I want to be sustainable to keep these programs in the future and take something like Cherokee Promise and say, well, if we only do 4,000 undergrads, then can we continue Cherokee Promise over here or something of that nature. You know, I mean, that's kind of what I see the work group being, is taking a wholehearted look and having uh, Coach Etheridge, if you will, come in and say, you know, this is what we got, this is what we want to do. I mean, when you're putting 12 million, 14 million towards education, it's hard to say we're not doing our part, you know, but let's see what we can do with that chunk of that pie. How many people can we feed and how long can we do it and what can we do? So. Thank you. So, uh, yes, Councilman Crittenden. Hey, Brown, you deal with this every day. Um, so, how does that hundred dollars cover an hour of Carl Albert studies? Well, is that get close? Yeah, I mean, as far as credit hour, you're looking at one hundred twenty-two, one hundred twenty-six dollars a credit hour. Mm -hmm. That's tuition. Then you've got fees. Now, if you're a senior. The six hours of that tuition is waived by the state. That's what we're talking about. So then that hundred dollars, that may cover you may have some fees and you know and everything else that would be covered and it may actually cover a book or two or what it just depended on, you know what I mean? But it depends on institution to institution on how much that'll cover. You know, and the only way the the, the kids that I see taking the nine hours at my institution, they go to Salisaw High School and there's dual enrollment. They get into a class, college algebra, and they get credit at the high school level for like an algebra three, and they get credit for college algebra within that semester, but they can take those other classes. That's the only, the rest of them are six hour kids, you know what I mean? Because they've got to be back at school, they've got athletics, they've got other things, but there's the one, and I see dual enrollment, that's something that's, that's a good thing, and it puts, but the deal with these institutions is now you've got to have people that work at the high school that are credential by HLC standard, which is the accrediting board for all of this region, all of these schools that have, you know, so it, it becomes a, an issue of school to school, what do they charge? But I mean, at my institution, yeah, the $100 a credit hour, and that's like this though, if they got, if they take six hours, this senior state waves that, well then they're getting 600 bucks, they're gonna come close. They may have a $100 bill or $200 bill, but that's close, you know. I mean, that's good. You look at it. Well, we're giving them six hundred. The state waived six hundred. They just got a twelve hundred dollars scholarship, and they didn't have to write an essay. Right. You know, they didn't have to go through a panel to. You know, most of these scholarships historically across the United States are competitive scholarships. You know, we've done something. We went above and beyond, and always. And I want to continue to do that, but then it becomes an issue. Do you want to be sustainable? Do you want to continue this excellence? We're not cutting anybody out, but it's, hey, I know it doesn't bother anybody when they're selling, if they have a flat screen TV that's a thousand bucks at Best Buy, and if they're giving them away, you got people outside sleeping. <coughs> you know what I mean? You got to get in line, and we need to, you know, get people to get in line yeah. and get after it. Sure. 
Thank you. Good, good words, Councilman. Uh, so, the, yes, Speaker. <coughs> yes, registration. How, how many uh, Cherokees are we registering averaging per month in the past six months? Are you asking me? Yes, per month. Um, we, we have about, uh, right now, about 1,200 applications a month. That's new ones. Mm -hmm. You're talking about sustainability, Councillor Warner. That's how we have to gauge this. What's that now? You're talking about sustainability. When you're having 1,200 waiting to be registered as Cherokees, that's what we have to look at. If you go back to you know, just five years, you saw that chart on how many we had then mm -hmm. and how, what we have now. Right. We're at... 12 to 15 million that we're, we're allocating in scholarships. So that's what we have to look at those numbers and get with registration, to get, they take all that stuff into factor how we're going to sustain those scholarships. And you said the key word to me, numbers. To me, it's always a number issue. Whether you have too much money, you don't have enough money, you got too many people, not enough people. I've said that. Time and time again, the issue here, it's a numbers issue. It is. And our tribe is growing. That's a good thing. But then you got to look at how can we sustain what we're going to do, you know? Yeah, we have to look at that criteria because uh, we just can't just, we don't have enough money just to give it uh, to anybody that walks up. There's got to be a criteria somehow. Well, the, uh, we don't want to be like the state of Oklahoma. Hey, Councilman Lake. These are all good things here. And one thing that if we have this work group and we work with the education department, I think that legislation can come from us rather than coming from uh, the executive branch just just thrown at us and, and we didn't we didn't hear the the debate previous to that. And I think that's what happened during that time period. The legislation was placed on our desk and we didn't hear all the where to's and why's and four out there's before we get to the point to where we, we had to vote on a piece of legislation. And this has kind of happened to us before. We didn't have input into it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I guess we're asking for. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Councilman Crittenden. I'd just like, I'd like to be on the work group if you could. Okay. Uh, Shelly, can we form a work group in the time window from uh, five to six between council on our next council day. Is that feasible for you guys? Who else wants to be added to this work? Uh, Miss Hatfield, you just can't have a quorum in there. Uh, Councilman Warner, Crittenden, Councilman Lay, myself, and, and then Ron, Ron Etheridge, which you are, or, or, or Jennifer. <laughs> council members is Hatfield, Warner, and uh, Shaw. Councilman Shaw. Anyone else okay. wants to be added? Hatfield, Warner, Crittenden, Lay, and Shaw? Yes. That's five. That's five. Okay. That's and then myself. Gotcha. All right. Okay. All right. Look looking forward to the good work. So we'll meet next council day uh, at, at 5, 5 p.m. or whenever the, what's the last, what's the last meeting? Community services? When's that, when's that window? Four, five, five or six? Community services get, there's a while, an hour and a half, so you can, you don't have to time it, you can just do it immediately following. Okay, so immediate following service. the community services. All right, uh, thank you, Ron. Good report. All right, next down to Head Start, Ms. Vernon Thompson. Good afternoon, everybody, Hi, and welcome to, to all the new folks. I do have something for each of you in just a little bit, but before I move on, I want to say, since you're talking about scholarships, uh, just for your information, through the federal government and in the name of Cherokee Nation, we serve almost a 1,000 births to four years old, and uh, the youngest one that we've enrolled this year is six weeks old, which is, they have to be six weeks old. Six weeks uh -huh. old. And uh, so we're, we're very pleased uh, to, uh, that's who we work for, those little uh, children. And you'll be proud to know that in Early Head Start, which serves birth to three, um, by the time they stay three years, you will have given that baby $40,500 worth of services. Wow. I mean, you don't think of it in those terms, but in Head Start, they go two years and they're three and four year old, 
at that time, it's uh, 20000 for two years of service. And with that said, you all will get a lot of calls about, can I get my child in Head Start or Early Head Start? Because I think Sequoia says school of choice. Well, we're, we are the early childhood uh, program of choice and school of choice. We, we are not a child care. We are not a daycare. It hits a nerve with us when we get called that because we, the six-week-old baby I referred to has a lesson plan as well as any Sequoia High School student. So our students, our staff work hard. I think they are the hardest <coughs> workers in the Cherokee Nation. And I think you'll learn a lot throughout your tour on Thursday. I'm sad that you won't get, you won't get to stop at the Children's Village, but I know Diane has a big day planned for you all. But uh, I want to introduce two uh, ladies that I've worked with for uh, over 30 years. They both are celebrating, is it this in August? 35 yeah, 35 years, both of them. Wow. So we were Head Start age when we started. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been finishing up my, uh, working on my 34th year there. And we've all taught, excuse me? What's their name? Oh, I'm sorry. Barbara Little Dave, the Senior Program Specialist. And Sandra Turner, Senior Program Specialist. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and just a little bit about our program. Uh, you all came in at a very eventful time. We get reviewed every three years, and this is the year for the federal review. And we are uh, in full speed preparing for it. Now, the tribal council that will play a role in it is uh, Councilman Jordan. He serves on our policy council, and I, I bet you'd like some company on that policy council he comes every month to our meetings and that is comprised of parents enrolled in the program and they uh, share share decision making with us and with that said we have income guidelines I have a uh, everybody else has received this but I want to hand this out to all the new folks and it's kind of a head start 101 it talks about our budget and all of the services and then uh, Barbara and them. <laughs> we have received 100% on our last five reviews every three years, and uh, we uh, are working hard to maintain that stat. Uh, it makes Cherokee Nation look really good in the eyes of the federal government. and other programs that serve uh, infants uh, through five, four years old. And um, I'm really proud and honored to tell you that Cherokee Nation, as well as the Leech Lake program in Minnesota, were two programs selected nationwide to participate in a video and picture campaign to uh, depict what a, a typical Head Start day, a typical Head Start program would look like. So we're very excited about it. I got approval this morning and uh, relayed the message to them, and they will be here before September 23rd. So it's a really quick turnaround. And when we go to Washington, D.C. for national training, we always see videos, <coughs> Holly, and, and they're, you know, <coughs> uh, American Indian Alaska Native programs are not represented well on those videos. So now we will be, and we get to be the ones. So um, that's, that's my news. Okay. Your report, Vernon. Anybody? Yes, Council will have to. Um, do we, I mean, are we welcome at your centers, or do we have to make an appointment with you? I, this is a dumb question, but I mean, do we, who do, can we visit? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we uh, welcome it. specific times that? We, we welcome it, and uh, we want you to come and read however. If we have uh, children with uh, <coughs> autism, mm -hmm. we do not open the doors for visitors because they like that structure. And uh, like I said, we work for them and it's all about their day, their environment. But if you'll give us a call where you want to go, we, we put the welcome mat out all the time to come and read. We have a read aloud program that allows you to come and uh, read to our children. Mm -hmm. you, and, and if you look in the book when you uh, get questions on enrollment, we are income based. And we have a lot of folks who, who are willing to pay for a slot, and uh, unfortunately, we can't do that. Uh, Councilman Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair Vernon. What's the phone number or contact person? Uh, just call the front office at 453-5757. Uh, Thank you. Mm -hmm. And they will relay the message to whoever is in charge of that site you're wanting to read to. And thank you, Councilman Lake. He goes to our uh, Wahilla site at Nowater quite often. Other uh, questions? Good report. Keep, keep up good work. And, and keep being a school of choice. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank That's you. Awesome. Our next school of choice is uh, super, <laughs> from Sequoia Schools, uh, Superintendent Leroy Qualls. Okay. 
it make of some of this stuff up, or is it real? <laughs> good afternoon. Hello. It's hard to, it's tough following all those good reports. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Welcome all the new council people. Hope you enjoy, and uh, so I'm sure you'll serve our people well in the next four years. <clears throat> uh, and this is kind of this is is not on my report. I've got some additional information added to the report, which I'll get to in just a minute. But just an overview for our, our new council people. Uh, we were fortunate last year to have four state champions, and that's pretty good for 3A for class 3A a smaller school uh, two years ago we had a robotics team state championship and they were all female girls all sophomores just some things i'm throwing out there is we were looked at as an athletic school and yes we had success but there's other things that we can do also three last uh, three past years we've had an ivy league uh award winner uh, go on uh one to harvard and then one to Brown, and then this, this fall, one is going to Dartmouth. And one of those three is going to hopefully try to be a Rhodes Scholar a year from now. So that, that's good stuff. I just thought I'd share with you. We had an open house at the high school on August the 1st, which is very early. I know, but we had a uh, building full of people from start to finish. And our immersion school, uh, school also had an open house last Thursday. And there were a lot of parents and patrons that came through there to the immersion school. And I think I speak for both the high school and the immersion school. If you ever want to visit, uh, just go to the front desk and ask if you can look around. And we'll try to find someone to give you a, a short tour while you're there. Um, we had two, uh, two new teachers hired this past year. Uh, I would say they're new teachers. Rhonda Doyle, that comes from Adair County, veteran teacher. I had her back in the late 90s, a very good teacher. And a new teacher, uh, Sequoia product, Lauren Keene, be teaching math for us this year. And this week, we're off and running in our second week of school, believe it or not. I got an email today. I was amused. I printed it off and showed it to my secretary. I said, I'm sure that you're beginning uh, getting ready to start school in three or four weeks. <laughs> well, we've got youngsters here and there. You know, it's, uh, we have to be ready and prepared. Um, and we're off to a good start. Some of our athletics, our softball team's three and one. Volleyball is one and oh. Football scrimmage against Sal. I saw this coming Friday night at 530. Uh, it's, it's just coming quick. Everything is just upon us now. Uh, the uh, district realignment for football came out, and we were very fortunate. Uh, next two years in football, we'll drop to 2A. But I, I don't see that happening anymore after that. Uh, the reason being our numbers are up. Our student counts at 390 right now. Uh, dorm count is 80. We finished the year at 59, so got a good start there with our dorm students and uh, trying to enter entertain these kids a little bit at the first of school so they don't don't get too uh, homesick and and leave us um, we've got I've heard concurrent enrollment we've at the current time we've got 66 students that qualify and 56 of those are Cherokee One last thing, a uh, couple of things. We got 103 seniors, which is a big class for us. I think we graduated in 74. So that's uh, a reason, another reason for jumping numbers. Our uh, really good news about three weeks ago, we received our ACT scores from the state. And our juniors class of last year is uh, scored above the state average. And I'm really proud of that. It's uh, good for Sequoia. One other state championship that I failed to mention, uh, one of those four I mentioned last year was actually a first ever academic state championship, and that's for a fast pitch softball. So I know that I 
added a bunch of things. Uh, some other things are here. If you have any questions, I'd. Speaker Burke? Yes. <laughs> you know, when there's a need for transportation or community trips, we always come to you for transportation because of, of our charter buses that we have. How do you get reimbursed for that when it's not in our budget? We're not, and that's that's a struggle as far as us meeting our budget is concerned. We pretty much eat the cost. Well, just one small example is, uh, you know, it's our vehicle. We're, we're going to furnish the bus driver. They already get 40 hours, so they're going to be time and a half for whichever program. You furnish the driver, you furnish the bus. Yes, and the gas. And that's not to mention the, the maintenance, uh, which is unforeseeable. But uh, Like our youth choir. They'll utilize it. Uh, our communities, if they need it, they'll also request a charter bus, correct? Yes. Yeah, we need to take a look at that in the budget because if we're going to utilize your, with the budget cuts that are out there, uh, you know, all over statewide, we need to take we need to take a long, hard look at that. You know, I wish the council somehow would look at how come we don't have a charter bus for our communities, for our elders, when they want to take a trip somewhere like North Carolina, go visit our Eastern Band people there. And we always come to Sequoia. Anyway, I just And we're glad that. to help when we can. Hey, I know you are. And, and you have to remember we have bus routes to run and a lot of activities. Uh, adding to that, the USDA reimburses us our food for breakfast and lunch. They do not for dinners, which were 24-7. They do not for weekends, and they do not for any trips. So we, we eat a lot of that cost. Uh, and Mr. Qualls, if, if you guys are going to continue your generosity in providing this transportation, is there a, a mileage, uh, a government mileage chart you guys could charge these other departments that are uh, using your services as well as uh, the hourly rate you guys are paying these folks to reimburse your budget? Well, there was years back. Uh, some information of data that I've seen, uh, you know, and, and we try to be good neighbors, you know, to help our own programs from Cherokee Nation. But so, it doesn't work out real well when we, uh, you know, if we're just paying our own bills, that's a struggle enough, but uh, we're actually paying, when you look at it that way, for others also. Sometimes the good neighbor can eat the other good neighbor out of groceries too, so. Yeah, keep that. Be mindful of that. <laughs> my, my neighbors, they they didn't have anything when I got done with them. <laughs> this buffet every night over there. And, and matter of fact, you're a victim of that. Remember, I came to your house to eat roast beef one night. Yeah. And Matt, David, your kids didn't have anything to eat when they got home. <laughs> Said that. Uh, Councilman Crittenden. Mr. Coles, how many kids would our dorms hold? Thanks. Around 200 or a little more. Thank you. Do you have any other questions, Mr. Qualls? Say none. Good report. Just to elaborate on his question, which is a good question, I've just approved some things for toothpaste, deodorant, essentials, for over $500 just on one order. And they're going to the movies, I think, and it's 300 and something dollars. You know what I mean? We're actually, we're responsible. We're the, we're the guardian while they're in school 24-7. And that's not to mention school supplies. We don't get, get Johnson O'Malley. We've ordered a bulk of school supplies, uh, which you know we provide, and plus a laptop. It gets uh, it gets tough. Budget hearings are coming up, so keep all this in mind. They fall under, you know, those those students. You can look at them as our constituents. You know, all of our constituents. You know, uh, exactly. We, you know, I would be glad sometime if. You know, to pitch in a little bit of like the community assistance money or something. I mean, because those kids need those supplies and stuff. So we're we'll gonna talk about that later, and I'd, I'd sure be willing sure. to pitch in a little bit for something like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Craig, you. You, you pitch in a little bit during budget hearings. <laughs> bet you. I'm yeah. all for that. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other questions? Saying none. 
Good job, Mr. Paul. Thank you, and then enjoy your day, and have a good year. Uh, down to old business, non pending new business, uh, discussion of possible action in Cherokee Palm Scholarship. Uh, you know, we, have, we all got, got news second hand of this. Ron's apology was accepted, a sincere apology. We appreciate that, Ron. Uh, Janice uh, called Janice Saturday and asked to get a special ENF meeting set up to. Uh, help fund these kids. Uh, we got Shelly on a conference call. We started visiting, and uh, we was able to put a special A and F meeting together to talk about this scholarship and, and fund it, fund it to fall through with the anticipation that these kids were having to receiving this funding. So Shelly came in on her day off on Saturday and got the meeting posted within the 10-day window. And so Shelly, we appreciate your dedication to, to this cause. With that being said, uh, the, uh, I'm going to let Janice talk briefly about the, the funding, how everything aspired with the administration. And so you, all minds are clear on how we receive this funding. Okay. Councilman Toad. Okay, and I would like to, um, when, Keith, would you go ahead and pass yours down there? I requested some documentation from um, various departments on this because when I got wind that 91 kids that were promised scholarships had the rug pulled out from them two weeks before school, I got angry about it. So I asked for the um, requirements of the promised scholarship, which is your first page here. <coughs> The application info that they were asked to provide the letter that they got regarding their scholarship application the fourth page is just um, all the applications that were in what was going on with the applications the next page is the letter that they got dated August 2nd and then the last page is some information from the Indian housing plan and so what I want to point out is that everybody that applied for the scholarship knew what the requirements were. They knew when the deadline was. They knew what they needed to turn in. And when you look at the chart here, there were several, uh, in fact, I don't know that Jennifer even dinged them for not being turned in on time. Some of them sent in two applications. Obviously, we're not going to fund them twice. Some of them were not attending a school that was on the requirement. Some of them were upperclassmen. Some of them weren't Pell eligible out of area. Some of them didn't meet the requirements. So of these 91 that it was reported had been given the scholarship and then it was taken back, some of them didn't even meet the requirements. The email that those kids got said, thank you for submitting your application. Nowhere on here does it say, you have been approved, you are getting this money. None of these 91 kids was told that they were approved for the scholarship. The Promise Scholarship is a competitive scholarship. It's, it's not guaranteed just because you apply, you're going to get it. And so, 46 of them, that's on this uh, chart here, 46 of the kids were approved. They met the, um, all the requirements and they were approved. They're going to be funded. So are all of those that completed the application, whether they turned it in on time or not. Um, obviously, if you're not attending a school that's in the Promise program, you're not. The upperclassmen are already being funded through the um, Promise Scholarship. There was also some accusations that money had been misappropriated. Your last page is what we filed in um, 15, 16, 17, and what we proposed to file, or I guess we, uh, Gary, Super. We've already filed the Indian Housing Plan for 18, correct? Yes, okay. So what is what is on here is what we turned in 
with our Indian housing plan that we intended to use this money for. We never told HUD we're only going to use this for tuition. It says expenses, fees for living, including room and tuition. So there were no misappropriation of funds ever, although there, there were some accusations of that. So I wanted everybody to have that information as you get calls. Um, we, we told them how we were using the money all along. The funding is coming from the grants. You'll, you'll see it in the budget modification tonight. We set money back every year to, because some grants are matching grants. And so that money is set back. Gary has been over the applicants. We can pay 100% of their housing costs, Gary. Yes, um, rather than the 1,000 portion that, that we had put aside. And so this, this funding has come together from funding that education has, from the um, NAHASA funding that we can use for this, and then the matching grants. And you'll see that in your budget mod tonight. So the money came from the matching grants? Most of it was already there. It was just a matter of um, how to put it all together. So if there's 40... How many students were eligible for this? Forty some, forty four kids. Um, Kanan, would you mind to go grab Jody Reese for me? So there's forty six kids that were eligible, and so. But we're funding more than that. We are funding more. Than yes, more and um, I have a figure in my head which I think was what Jody told me, but I forget for sure. How many kids are we actually funding? Oh, I don't, I didn't bring that with me either, so. Uh, Ron, Ron, do you know the answer to that? Yes. Uh, well, uh, based on what I've been told uh, is uh, we had, as you said, 46, okay, we, uh, we're going to fund 49 uh, is what we were going to fund because here was the, the, the total situation. Northeastern four-year institution could take 25. Roger State four-year institution could take 25. Connor State two-year institution could only take 12. So we're going to take 62. So to explain it to you where you where you understand it, and, and Denise said that there was some late. Well, here we had an April 12th was it was a deadline that we asked them to have it in, but technically they were not late until they come in after June the 15th because all our scholarships are due June the 15th. So that's why they were categorized in the respective okay. categories. Okay, on time, late, so forth. Well, in communication with, with Chief's office, uh, Chief wanted to leave no doubt and make sure that if they had it in and, and they had everything there, that they would be funded. So that's why we come up with the number around 70 okay there are additional ones that that would be out of area uh would be over uh, would not qualify for pell over budget an upperclassman there were categories there that those other 28 kids were in and so they would still be eligible for a two thousand dollar scholarship but not the 4600 so uh Janice, doing the math on the 49 kids that Ron stated at $3,200, $1,600 a semester. So we're, we're going to find $157,000 through matching grants? Is that? Is that well, a, part of it is on the Nahasta piece of it, we can <coughs> fund their total housing costs. Which is $1,000. No, because we can fund the, the total, the total the, housing cost for uh, that kid. Above the $1,000. Semester. including the thousand dollars whatever whatever their housing is if they are Pell eligible is Gary mm -hmm. yes Pell eligible no no how's the income no, how's, no, how's no, no. okay and that that was another thing that was kind of confusing um, the the Pell requirements and then a hostage requirements are very similar but not exact and so Gary's been hammering that out if they're not hostage eligible we can fund their total housing cost okay, above the thousand dollars it would include the thousand dollars, but yes. Okay, so say it cost me fifteen hundred dollars to live at NSU for a year. If I am Nahasta eligible, 
we can take the whole 1500 out of the Nahasta funds. Okay. All right. That's good information to know. Didn't know that. Uh, so what's the total, what's the total the, bill that the, we're looking for? The budget mod uh, is, is taking 214633 As part of that, we're also not only funding fall 2017, but we're clearing up the spring of 2017 out of these general fund dollars just to be make sure that there's never a question on that so okay so it's 14,000 and it's coming out of cash match for grants so it's not not going to come out of the carryover uh, I mean it's not coming out of the reserve funds or anything it's cash match for grants okay so uh, let me and, and correct me if I'm wrong Ron, the, the Cherokee promise for one semester is broken down with $2,000 from Cherokee Nation, Cherokee Nation $2,000 scholarship, the $1,000 Nahasa Housing Assistance Scholarship, and then the $1,600 from Nahasa for books and tuition for one semester. Is that correct? Is that the Cherokee promise package for $4,600 per no. semester? We're just required to make sure that we stay within budget. And, and as far well, as the particulars I, there, <laughs> I, I can't answer that. Okay. It, it's, Jody, and, it, that's the way the policy reads, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jody. Yeah. And so, uh, so, anyways, I'm just wanting to bring clarity to this whole situation. It's been resolved. Thanks, Councilwoman Taylor. And, and so, there are some questions that we have, I have some questions, but I'll let you guys ask them first. So Councilman Crittenden. Yeah. Mr. Estrin, again, thank you for being uh, available through this thing. Let me just make sure I got this in my head. Anybody who would have qualified that 70, if they would have qualified previous years, they're gonna get the money, the 4,600 per semester that they expected. That's correct. The second semester, provided they keep a 2.0 GPA. You betcha. You betcha. And provided they do their community service. Bottom line, these kids are getting what they were expecting and what they qualify. They will, will be required to live in housing other than their home. All right. Thank you. Good job. I'm happy. <laughs> uh, Councilman Shaw, you had a question. Well, no, I, I was just curious, I mean, because this, this, I mean, let's face it, everybody went crazy over all this, and I was just curious at what point did we realize we had this problem? It was after the, the meeting that was held uh, the previous month, and uh, uh, once again, you know, we're required to stay within budget. That's, that's our requirement. See, I budget my checkbook monthly, or excuse me, weekly, and I always know how much money I have there, and I... We know how much money we got, too. That's why I'm just telling you. We're required to stay within budget. That's what we're doing. Okay. okay. We were going to be without, outside of budget had we went ahead and stayed with it. Okay. I guess last month I didn't hear you say you were so close to your budget. I haven't come in. That we had to be concerned. No, we, we didn't. At the time, we didn't know. We didn't know? No. That's my life. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And when I start, I got I called Ron. I called Ron and Gary and the chief. And, and, you didn't call me. Uh, and she <laughs> said, yes, texted you. And, and probably another two or three other folks. But I think I kind of understood where we were at by those phone calls. And I knew eventually we'd find the money somewhere. But I was just wondering what. Jody, when did you get your numbers that, that you just told us about today? I uh, just did around 14,000 yes, for the month tonight. Yeah. Um, middle of last week, so. And why it was not the count? I mean, I never got any information that that, that money was coming in. How come? It's, it's a substitute mod tonight, so. I understand. Yeah. That it, it was. It's going to be discussed today. You guys can might change the numbers. So it was discussed last week. <laughs> yeah. How come we didn't get that number? So that we all knew that we were good to go. I, I don't know. And it's just a question. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not asking Jody, but I'm, yeah. somebody should have authorized that to be sent to county. Who, whose job is that? I, I just have a comment. Um, I didn't care where 
the money came from as long as it was legal as and I was told probably the same time everybody else was these kids are going to be funded we've worked out a solution so that so my, my concern my, was with the kids is a valid one, no matter what the explanation could be Normally, I would have sent it out, I mean, on a normal deal, but I knew there was going to be discussion today on on this uh, item, so that's kind of reason why I didn't send it out beforehand. And, and each person I called knew their portion of the problem very well, and they explained it to me, and I appreciate all of it. Thank you. Right, Speaker Burke. Yes, Mr. Etheridge, I just appreciate you, you know, calling and answering your phone uh, <laughs> over the weekend and you know, chair. <clears throat> you did good in, in bringing it to light. I was on the phone with Lacey as well and on the phone with Chief, but I don't think council you need to remember that Mr. Etheridge, they can't commit any funds and go beyond their budget without us appropriating that money. So you held true with your budget. We appreciate that. And like I've told Connie Davis many times, don't ever come in here and tell us you're in the red. We don't be like the state of Oklahoma. So you can't you can't authorize any funds unless we appropriate it, Mr. Anthrich. So you did good in staying within your budget. We appreciate that. And I know that letter that you wrote and signed off on, you've been with us a little bit over a, you know, just a little bit over a year. I'm not sure that should have come by you. That might should have come from somebody at upper level. But I appreciate you taking the hit and carrying it out like a man. Well, it's my responsibility. Sure. I, and, and I'm almost two years now, so yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. like to claim that rookie status as long as I can. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the main thing is, I, I was in fact concerned. I had several calls, and I knew the chief was getting ready to be out of town. And the way the government works is not a quick process. but you know, I knew it was going to be resolved, and I stayed on the phone as well over the weekend. And appreciate Shelly coming in, but it got resolved. I guess that's the main point. And appreciate everybody working together. Thanks, Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, I was looking at this last uh, uh, these emails from the, from the IHP. <clears throat> you stated that there was uh, there was no money that was uh, an unallowable cost to be spent out of the halls of the money, and so the question is is why are we adjusting if it's if it's a legal expense? Why are we why are we adjusting this, Gary? If if, if it's written in the IHP and we approved it, why are we adjusting monies? I I think uh, uh, the main reason is just to be just to make sure that the hospital money is being spent on on uh, the hospital. Uh, expenses on uh, housing expenses, and that's that's exactly what it, what it was. Well, if we put tuition in there, it should be an allowable cost. If tuition's in the IHP and we approved it, it should be an allowable cost. Is that correct? Not necessarily. So is it, it, it is it, it un mean, is it unallowable? No, uh, no, it's not unallowable. It's not even you know. If it's in the grant, we approved it. It should be an allowable cost. Mm, not necessarily. It would be a little. I'm confused. I mean, it could possibly be questionable whether or not. You know, I think I think Cherokee Nation as a whole, uh, part of our responsibility to being good financial stewards and making sure that we spend our our money properly, is we thought that it was prudent just to make sure um, that. Just so there never was any question. Uh, who was it that arose question that it may not be kosher to spend money in this area? The, the AG? Well, that, that's okay. a, it was a collaborative between okay. the treasurer's office and the attorney general's office. Now, the, we have copious audits at the, the Cherokee Nation, and we always get great returns and great results from, from that audit. The reason we get those. Uh, audits, uh, th those good returns on those audits, is because of the uh, fortress of safeguards 
that the uh, the treasurer puts puts forth with the uh, with our funding. Now there's different degrees of uh, of questions here. Now there's was the funding illegal? Was the funding unallowable? Those are two different uh, legal definitions. Those are funding questions. Now reasonable people could could. could can come to different opinions of whether those funding are placed. <coughs> being the most conservative and always being the, the, the good steward of the charity of the money. The administration, the hospital, education came with the, 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 uh, the, the solution of let's reprogram these funds and find funding that, that unquestionably is, is uh, without, without question. Uh, that's what we've done here. That's what good stewards of the, uh, uh, the people's money do. So therefore, uh, it's a, it was a long process. Could the process have sped up? Should, you know, yes, it's a learning curve. We, as as uh, Mr. Etheridge says, uh, you know, if we could run that play over again, would we? Absolutely. We well, would come to these conclusions early. The, uh, this uh, is the pro this is Yes, yeah, I, I understand. It's, a, it's questionable. Okay. okay. So, uh, the chief said that the regulations have changed. Has have the regulations changed, Gary, for in the Hosta? Yes, but I don't know that that was one that particular that, that necessarily changed. I'd have to go back and look at that. Sure. There was some, but there was some regulation changes recently. Were the regulation change addressed towards this tuition or addressed in another area? Uh, I, I'm not comfortable with. Answer in one way or another because I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I don't believe so. Uh, I, I can't give you a okay. answer. All right. Research. Okay. Uh, you know, I, in this whole thing, uh, it was confusing. A lot of people got confused. And I think cause we just had a lot of different things going. Uh, but uh, regardless, it was, it was addressed, it was, it was funded. Uh, I'm happy about that. I have a few more questions, but before I get to that, uh, Councilwoman Vasquez. Yes, I have a question, and I guess this would be for you, Ron, about the uh, covering the meal plans. There's a $4,600 cover. About the what? Meal plans. Meal plan. Eating. Or did, would the kids pay for their own meals? Over? We're just wondering if well, that's still funded. Well, once again, they're going to get $4,600 an hour for that little goal. Yeah. Now, now, I'll tell you another thing. I mean, I've, I've learned a great deal in studying this. Sometimes you don't learn until you're, you're kind of put under the, you know, uh, 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 under the gun, so to speak. And uh, I, uh, each one of these kids qualify for Pell. Uh, they get anywhere from $700 to $5,800 in addition to this $4,600 that you're going to award. So, uh, I would say there's funding enough to pay for the meals. Okay. Should be. Thank you. Thank you. The other, the other thing that really stood out was the uh, the promise. There was question: Did these kids get promised this money? And the students that called us said yes, we were promised. The Cherokee Nation said no, they were not promised. So the financial aid advisors that I spoke to at NSU said that in January, these kids, they, uh, they accept their awards for financial aid. They end everything in January for financial aid. They either accept, decline. These kids declined $4,600 of money. Anticipation of getting this money, it was on their award packet when they went to enroll in the school. And then when they got the letter and the news broke, the 4600 had been subtracted off of their account, and now they're trying to find money. The financial aid advisors, and this is live stream, and this is information for you guys to take back to your constituents, you can do a modification with the financial aid office. You guys have students that are in this predicament. They can go back to their financial aid officers and do a modification to get that financial aid back and, and get them back into the red, and back into the black. So, uh, just just to keep that in mind, uh, we have a we have a young man in the back, uh, Mr. Uh, Chandler. Uh, he was uh, he had applied for the scholarship, 
uh, he had uh, anticipated uh, this money. It was on his it was on his sheet that he was receiving this Cherokee Promise money at the college. Uh, Ron, it sounds like there was a communication error between us and the universities as far as them getting this money. Uh, can you entertain that any or, or bring light to that? Uh, David, we don't award anything until we're, we're, we're told that we've, the funding is available to award it. So there was no award letter sent out to anyone. Was there a, a young man, uh, was there, did you receive an email or phone call? I received a phone call. Saying I what? Thomas, uh, saying that I was awarded the scholarship. Okay. So it sounds like there's miscommunication from RN to our kids with, uh, yeah, I don't throw anyone on the bus. It just sounds like he was wanting to communicate effectively to the recipients because the kids I talked to said they were awarded this as well. And the universities thought that these kids were awarded as well. So anyways, with that being said, that, that those were situations that I, I received phone calls on. Um, so moving forward in the future, so we're going to fund these kids a one-time $4,600 for the freshman. The freshman's going to get a one-time $4,600. And then the next year... My understanding is they're getting their whole freshman year. The That's correct. Is that the way you understand That's it? The, the freshman year. Fall semester, yeah. spring semester. But, the, but when they become a sophomore, junior, and senior, they're going to be... Treated like everybody else. They're going to be treated like everyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just share with you our recommendation, and that is to fund it for this fall semester and the, this spring semester and uh, the reason uh, started program started in 2011 in Northeastern it's it's going on for for six years uh, we've had 14 graduates how many 300 307 students 14 graduates I beg to differ with that I'm sorry I know that that is faulty my daughter graduated she's not listed she was one of the students Okay. Uh, so the, I know your dad is faulty. Uh, I'm not saying that there, there may be some that, that went ahead and left the program before before they, I mean, like in your daughter's case, right? Okay. Is she teaching? She went four full years under the Promise program. She lived in the, in the dorms for four full years. She had one class left to take in her in internships, which she could not do while living out in the dorms. So as soon as she finished those, she got her degree. How do you call that not a graduate? No, no, that would be a graduate. I mean, I'm not, I'm not disputing your, that. But your data does not reflect her. Yeah. And if it doesn't reflect the daughter of a council person, it, who's gonna, who is it going to reflect? Was she Pell eligible? No. I thought, Ms. Jeffrey, you said these were Pell eligible. It, there was a... I'll, I'll fill you in on that. <laughs> I was hoping you would. <laughs> you get into personal stuff that I don't... Okay. Okay. Council McCready? Yeah, it's, it's, we were talking about it. It's going to be for both semesters, right? This money that, for the one semester. That's correct, provided they have at least a 2.0 GPA. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, we were discussing recommendations. Hey, <laughs> hey, people were talking about recommendations and stuff. I'm just, that's what I want to know before I walk out of here. So I'm, again, thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes. Speaker Burke. Uh, give us some numbers. You know, I don't, I'm not going to go faulty, not faulty data. I'm going to take you as you were. You're an executive director. Uh, but give us some information on the graduates and back it up with some data. Well, I mean, I just I mean, that's all. I mean, that's uh, not right now. There, there's 37. Okay. Uh, not right now, but when you're still you, in the program. Yes, when you have this. Last this, year we had 98 in the program in the spring, and only 51 are returning. Okay. So, because just a little bit about the program. You know, we just, we just looked at a program not too long ago uh, about the one we had at Northeastern that was seven years in the making. Language teachers, Cherokee speakers. Some of you guys remember that. We spent millions of dollars on that. We had three people come out of there that were certified to teach the language. You know, these kids that get into this promise, it's a great program. But also, you've got to be able to take on what comes with you. You live in the dorms. You're checked on Wilson Hall. 
and you and you have to be part of the culture aspect of the Cherokee Nation. It looks good on the front end, freshman year, sophomore year. You get to be junior and seniors, you kind of, you know, you kind of you're you're familiar with the funding that's available, and not everybody wants to stay in that program because, you know, it's difficult to stay in that program, and and bring on all the culture aspect of it if you're not into that. So that's why I say the graduate level is not as high as it should be. Program's worth looking at. It sounds good on the surface, but if we've only graduated that small number that you said, then why don't you guys make some recommendations to small groups, Mr. Chairman? Uh, dear words, I, speaking with the uh, Vice President of NSU, they said that the Cherokee Promise freshmen are competing at the same graduation rate as a, a non pell eligible freshman. When you say we had 14, is it 14 kids graduated out of the last six years? Yeah, the last six years, yeah. There's 14 kids graduated. If this is, this is a pilot program started with 20 kids, okay, and these kids came through a freshman year, it takes roughly five years to graduate from college. And this, we're, we're, we're embarking on our uh, first year of graduating seniors. So 15 of, 14 of these 20 kids graduated. There's statistics that show that at freshman graduate, graduation rate, if it's in the high 20 percentile, those are good numbers. That's what average is across the United States, the high, high 20s, mid 20s. So now let's get back to us being a bridge out of poverty. Now this program may have some uh, may have some problems with it that needs to be fixed, but we don't want people to be dependent upon the Cherokee Nation. I think everyone can agree with that. But we do want to be a bridge out of poverty, and these kids that we're talking about are first generational Cherokee college students that are Pell eligible. These are poverty stricken kids. The statistics show that people without a bachelor's degree make approximately $20,000. A, a year. A kid with a bachelor's degree makes around $40,000 a year. Getting a bachelor's degree is a wealth generator. It stimulates the economy and it helps our people. If we want to get our people out of poverty, we need to educate them. Now like I said, this, you know, staying in the dorm, being checked on when you're, you know, sophomore, junior, senior, they may not be the answer. But we as a Cherokee Nation, Right now, we're just passing the money out. Here's your $2,000, here's your $2,000. I don't know what the dropout rate is for our college kids, but our first generational kids breaking that mold is a lot more tougher than someone that's already had the road paid for prior to. <coughs> so we just need to put our heads together. We might need to form another work group to find a program that is similar to this, may not be exact, and find funding for it because you know looking at 5100 scholarships that's 20 million dollars we're going to be spending on scholarships this next year last year we spent 16 million so i know joey's doing the math in his head right now but it's 5185 <laughs> times four thousand dollars so you're uh, the chair you're running over is it hey yeah i'm sorry uh, anybody have any more questions, comments? Yes, Councilman Lake. I'll run myself over just a okay. right. And the kids from sophomore to senior, you're going to keep going with them? I think yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. I got two people here. Yes, uh, Diane. I just wanted to make mention of the fact that the vocational training program does pay for some of the associate degree programs if you're going into some of the health pro programs. So I just wanted to clarify that because when you're looking at scholarships and training, uh, don't forget our vocational because we do pay some of the colleges and universities. Yes, because the, yeah. kid, the kids that leave this program go end up in yes. your program. Yes, we work hand-in-hand -hand with our Yes, education. yeah. I just, yeah, Joe, I just want to clarify this 214000 is for spring of 2017 past fall of 2017. The 2000, the spring of 2018 will need to be addressed in the budget hearings, which, okay, you know, I think that number was 136,000 or whatever, but that's, this, this is actually just for 17 and 
18 will need to, need to be addressed in the budget hearings. Okay. Which I think everybody's on the same page that it's going to be done. But, okay. But it will, that will be a separate All right. uh, dollar uh, amount. Chair? Yes, I just have a suggestion. Uh, like the scholarships are kind of handed out. You know, I feel like we would have more kids graduate through the program if we had an interview process of who comes in and says, okay, does this kid really deserve to be in this scholarship? I'm more competitive. And it would, it would funnel out kids who are like more driven to like go on and get a college degree. Because there are a lot of kids that want to get the money for the job. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Out yeah. 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 Oh, well, Shay, uh, we might put you on our work group. Those are good words. <laughs> so, let's be saying that. Uh, uh, good input. Uh, Councilman Terry, appreciate the information. Uh, we're going to go ahead and adjourn this meeting. I hear a motion. Y yes, yes. Motion, second. All in favor, signify, say aye. 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 Sorry, uh, Councilman.